which would be just a hard straight line. So I'm always trying to relate my form to the edge, the way something's rendered. Um, but for kind of like a highly rendered, detailed, uh, finished drawing, I think it's just exactly the same. Uh, and it follows a process of working up or building through your, you know, your successive layers of gradation. And then we get into some new kind of fun problems of composition. Um, the uh, idea of edge fall off, uh, which also I think brings us to another kind of interesting issue of uh, what does it mean to make a render drawing? Are you, uh, what is your definition of representation? Is it to uh, enact a photographic idea of, of something seen? Or are you really trying to think about the way that um, our eye takes in information from a seen subject? Uh, so I think it's just another door that gets opened uh, when we start to think about rendering filled with a number of really wonderful complex questions that go beyond the level of technique. Okay, and Michael, do you have any like final rendered um, compositions, uh, with, like of just your your final renderings or anything like that? Uh, when I was in school, I did a lot of representational painting. Um, I don't think I have any of those around, um, but not so much. I generally am, um, as far as this work for the book and the lecture, been more interested in the study and the setup, um, as I think it's something that. I was always interested in as a student and um, I think is valuable for a lot of students in making or exposing that thought process, which doesn't really get so much um, in the final render. Well, that, that looks good right now, actually. Um, let me see. But perfect. Thank you, Michael. Um, our next question is from Muhammad. Um, he says, hi, Michael. I'm not sure if this was addressed in your workshops as I've only gone through half of your videos so far. Um, his question is, how do you combine limbs to the torso, specifically the legs with the lower torso, pelvis, and lower abdomen? Um, I'm having problems when it comes to drawing female, especially from the three-quarter view. Anyway, love the book. In fact, I got to know about uh, CGMW through your, your blog. Um, so that was his question. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for um, connecting the limbs, I generally do start by working through um, the bones. And so making sure that, you know, in the, the second stage where I'm laying on the, the skeletal structure on top of the gesture, I'm kind of like if you're looking at the desktop, the one you see on the bottom left, um, that's really how I start to think about the placement and relationship of the bones. Uh, basically drawing like a shorthanded skeleton. And then after that, if you look at the top right, the more finished drawing where the cylinders are laid in uh, for that arm on the right side, um, that's how I would connect after. Um, I always make sure that I have a, a degree of overlap between the cylinder and the shape for the torso, um, the cylinder of the arm, the shape for the torso, or the cylinder of the leg and the shape for the pelvis. Um, and then from that point, it's, it's anatomy, um, which can, at a very beginning stage can be dealt with by pinches and stretches, or the C and S curves that we talk about um, in the book. Uh, but anatomically, obviously, a much more complex problem, as I think that's the, the most difficult part of the figure, is really understanding the transitions. Um, so what I do offer in the book is just that you can always um, begin to generalize with the C um, or S curves, as long as the connections read well uh, with the wrapping lines and the overlaps. And then after you set up those kind of primary shapes, uh, or intersections perspectively, then I think it's much more appropriate to begin the study of anatomically what exactly makes those parts work. Um, for women, um, well, there's a lot of difference uh, or some difference in skeleton. Uh, for example, the angle uh, of the legs, the angle of the, the arm, the elbow, the displacement and um, not displacement, but the uh, replacement of the areas of fat and the collection of fat. Um, give you know, obvious shape and proportion differences. Um, so that's what I would start with, is uh, really trying to go and start using the basic skeletal structure that we set up uh, and giving it modified um, designs. Uh, for example, the, the degree of the opening for the rib cage um, is different in women, uh, the angle of that thoracic arch. So once you have that basic kind of constructive skeleton down, then it's just about changing it up. Um, and I think that's a great thought process to also begin because it uh, will allow you then to depart into animals and then that will allow you to depart into creatures uh, or wherever else it, it is. 
that you end up wanting to go. All right, perfect, Michael. Um, this also the, the image on the desktop real quick I think illustrates my the question on the composition of the figure. Um, like for example here how the lines show different movements and directions. That's something that I'm really interested in for composition is uh, again that's kind of more of an illustration of that principle. Right. Okay, good. Uh, I have a question from RS. Actually it's a a lot more compliment, but uh, his his question is uh, hi Michael. Thank you very much for this workshop. I love your approach to figure drawing. I already ordered your book and hope to learn as much as I learned in your workshop. But what's the best way to learn anatomy without losing motivation and how to get started? Thank you. Mm. Well, thanks. I'm glad that the, the workshop was helpful. Um, how, to, how to learn anatomy without losing motivation. That, that's a hard one. Um, it's obviously not easy to study anatomy and um, it's not Let's just be completely honest. It's maybe not the most exciting thing uh, to cover. Uh, like when I make all the students break open their anatomy books on the first day of class, no one cheers, and there's not you know, resounding shouts of enthusiasm from all over the room. Um, so it, it's definitely hard to keep yourself motivated. Um, what I did and what I found worked for me really well was um, I liked hearing it a lot. So I attended, you know, when I was studying figure drawing, I tried to make it like a job. So I would go to classes. 35, 40 hours a week for years. And what helped me was just hearing it, the repetition of hearing it, but also being able to be in an environment where I could practically exercise what I was hearing, you know, with breaks. You know, so that um, you know most of the drawing classes I attended were you know lecture and then you draw some and then lecture and you draw some. And I felt that was a great way to not immediately kind of forget some of the information you learn. And having to incorporate that into a practice is and maybe just as difficult as understanding what's there or what it is you're seeing or what the anatomy is doing. Um, so that's something I would definitely recommend as a way to study anatomy if you can uh, that I think will also help you stay motivated because you'll be able to see improvement and what's more you know, motivational than seeing your work grow. Um, but beyond that, I always continue to learn. And so I still don't think my study is, of anatomy is done and I continue to take classes to improve what it is that, that I know. So it, it's a constant thing. Uh, and I think when you start to just enjoy the, the process uh, of learning that um, you know, it'll, it'll be a lifetime pursuit, which I think is going to be really rewarding. Perfect. Uh, I think that answered Art's question. Um, our next question is from Autumn who's asked, are there any resources you recommend for muscle to bone reference? Lots of muscle group stuff slash skeletal stuff, but I've had a lot of trouble with point of connection and mechanics, e.g. effect of uh, the ona radius rotation. Thanks. Mm -hmm. My favorite anatomy book is probably the Elliot Goldfinger book. Um, I really like that one a lot. I've had that one probably the longest um, because it does a really good job of showing that insertion um, origin. Uh, it has a real specific, nice presentation of skeleton, skeleton with insertion origin, um, anatomical diagram that's more kind of rendered, and then the actual photograph. So you can make a comparison and connection all the way through. And what he also does that I really value is he demonstrates the muscle as a simple shape or design, which is something, again, um, that if you have the, the figure drawing book that I put out, really indebted to. Um, so I think that that's been one that I've really enjoyed, but that being said, I, I try to get every book um, that I can uh, on anatomy. So I mean, I think Hogarth's books are great. Um, I never got a ton from them in that they always just seem too stylized, but I still like them. Um, Bridgman is great, maybe not perfect for insertion and connection or origin and insertion, um, but Anything you can find, I would pick up. And uh, the Rache book is obviously, you know, one of the the, the better ones as well. Um, but again, I'm just one of those people that kind of believes in getting every single book, and then uh, from there, kind of collecting and uh, piecing together your own puzzle. But definitely for insertion and origin, get the um, the Goldfinger book if you don't have it. Goldfinger. So, can you repeat the name of the book and the author one more time for the participants? It's um, Goldfinger's. Um, anatomy for the Artist. Elliot Goldfinger? 